My brain is smart. Today I came up with something that I pre-recorded a couple weeks ago, like around Christmas, but I came up with a great name and I would just like to expose it. The name of this new series of videos that I'm going to be doing is called Cancering Your Questions. Get it? Cancering? <laughs> High five. Okay, well, I'm excited about it and I hope you are too. Basically, what I'm going to do is every so often I'll choose one to several questions that you guys have posted on my videos um, and I will answer them, otherwise known as cancer them. That sounds morbid. That's... it's a play on words. I didn't really think that part through. <laughs> it's all in the spelling. I'll show you. Cancer. Cancer. They're different. See? It's different. Just go along with it. Yeah, um, here's more of my face in the first episode of Cancering Your Questions. Hey guys, it's Danny. Um, I'm back once again and I'm trying to do videos more often so I decided that since I haven't done one of these yet I'm going to do a question and answer video. Today I'm doing my own. I'm actually going to answer your questions that are on my YouTube account. The first question is from Jazz Delio, and I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your YouTube names correctly. Jobs Deleo says, You stated that you lose all of your hair. Does this include your eyelashes, eyebrows, armpit, nose hair, and privates? It includes everything. I was in heaven because I didn't have to shave anything. My legs were always smooth, so it was awesome. Um, that's really the only benefit to losing all your hair is no maintenance. Um, however, there's another maintenance that comes into play when you lose your eyebrows and your eyelash. I try to make myself feel better by putting on more makeup than I would normally wear. I like to do the winged look because when I had no eyelashes, I found that a liquid eyeliner just above your lash line or where your lash line would be and then extending it would make your eyes look like they maybe had eyelashes still there. So, um, that really helped for me. Also drawing on your eyebrows because yes, they were completely gone, but when I lost my eyebrows and my eyelashes, it made me feel more sick, like I looked sicker. And I know that it's different for everybody, so not everybody, like maybe you'll, I don't I don't think I lost all the hair on my head, I still had like a, a bit of peach fuzz the entire time, so like it's different for everybody. Okay, another comment left on my hair loss video. Um, was one by Shandon Paul Chowd Chowdhury? Chowdhury discussing a formula that promotes hair growth. And I just want to remind you that when you're going through chemo, none of these miracle products will help you get your hair back. You just have to kind of wait it out till you're done chemo and your hair will start growing back, I promise. Chemo is basically a poison and it's not it's killing the cancer in your body and all of your hair follicle cells. So if you don't have any cells to produce the hair, these products won't work. I think it was my 20th video. I made like a 20th anniversary video. Because <laughs> I do that. It kind of makes me laugh. Like I know people get hate comments and like they kind of get hurt by it and whatever. I just find, I find like comments that are putting me down or like inadvertently putting me down just kind of funny because I feel like people just people don't understand or like they're just <laughs> it makes me laugh reading this comment but I'm gonna read it because people are posting these things okay people are constantly posting these things so this this has nothing to do I'm not gonna answer this at all it um Wahuji Muba I'm glad you made it although I'm really quite surprised you need to look it up. Gersion therapy. One CT scan is equal to 200 chest x-rays, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tips. I don't know. From my last video, you can tell I don't know what to say to these things. We all have our choices, and I just want to spread awareness. It is a really hard decision to make when you are faced with do I do chemo or do I not? And it's kind of like life or death. Like, what do you want to do? Take your chances with chemo, which could eventually cause more cancer and, you know, 
other thing, other complications, or just do nothing slash eat healthy and just pray for the best. Well, I personally decided to just listen to my three doctors telling, or four doctors telling me to do chemo and radiation. Now, that's me personally. You can do whatever you want. I just went with the odds, and thankfully, two years later, I am still cancer-free. So, I'm happy with the decision I made, even though I am scared for my future, yes, but when you're diagnosed with cancer and you pretty much have a split second to decide what you want to do um, treatment-wise, I'm still young, so I want to do anything possible to lengthen my life. I want to have kids, I want to get married, I want to move out, I want to move out of my parents' house. So I, I just wanted to do anything I could to cure my cancer now. And then, yes, it might give me complications in the future, but I will deal with it then. And that is something that I might regret, but I can't because that is a decision that I made. And yes, I was young, but I had very much support backing me up. I had four doctors telling me, you know, this is the right decision for you. We've done all our research, blah, blah, blah. And I haven't done any research, so I'm going to listen to the people that have done all their research and went to school for it and have degrees. Okay? The lesson here is that you shouldn't worry about what other people say about your treatment choices, how you decide to view your life, how you decide to cope with having cancer, any of the above. Do not listen to anybody. Um, it's great to have support. You're also going to have the people that are bringing you down, and you have to kind of tune those people out. So, Neil Tupper left a comment saying that he finished treatment. Congratulations on finishing your treatment. He says that I have the same pain in my side as you mentioned in an earlier video. The doctors can't find anything wrong with me, and I was wondering if you ever find out what the pain was. Um... To be honest, no, I never found out what the pain was in my side. I think now that I'm done treatments and I have been done for two years, I've noticed the pain has gone. Like, I I never get it. Um, about a year ago, I got it not as often as I did before I got treatment, but I did get it, you know, like once a month kind of thing, so I was still worried about it, but honestly, now I don't get it at all. So maybe I'm not a doctor and the doctors that I have asked have no idea but um, my one oncologist seems to think that you know maybe it was a lymph node like I did have enlarged lymph nodes that's what my cancer was all about it was enlarging all my lymph nodes so possibly a lymph node in my chest because I had I had lymph nodes in my um, armpit, my chest, and my neck that were very swollen. So possibly, you know, one of these lymph nodes around here were pushing on one of my organs maybe? I don't know. Something in there to cause the pain? So I'm not sure. I hope your pain has let up because mine is much, much better. Um, let me know if you find anything out about that because I haven't had any luck other than possibly it was due to the cancer. But Ooh, Teresa, ooh says, can you talk about your experience with chemo slash radiation? I'm being tested for lymphoma and trying to mentally prepare myself for the possibility that it will be positive. Please be honest. I would rather be realistically prepared than think it would be so terrible and then blindsided with the worst experience of my life. I would like to first point out that in my videos, I try to be 100% truthful. Sometimes I even feel that I might be crossing the line a little bit with you guys because I'm so truthful that maybe it might be scaring some of you or um, because everybody's experiences are so different with cancer and treatments that it might not be a reality for any of you and maybe I'm just putting all these ideas in your head and it won't even happen for you. So me talking about something like having a really bad chemo experience might not relate to you and then I'm just kind of left scaring you. So I just want to say that I'm really glad that someone posted that. It made me feel better because when I post these videos my intention is definitely not to scare you. It's all about the truth. It's all about my personal experiences and my personal opinion. You can disagree with me all you want and that is totally fine. We're all entitled to our opinions. Um, 
So basically, to answer your question, Teresa, I have talked about this in other videos, but my chemo was really, really hard, and I pretty much threw up the entire time, and the first chemo was really, really easy, and I was like, oh, I can do this again, like, I can do this. But then after the second one, I started getting anticipatory nausea, and that's when I started doubting myself and basically just feeling like crap the entire time. So every time I would go into the chemo suite, I would be terrified. I, ha I would have to be on all these drugs before I even would get into the hospital just to get in there because I'd be throwing up so much. So um, yeah, chemo overall was a bad experience for me. So I ended up sticking it out for the six months, but it was hard. My radiation experience was not as dramatic, definitely not. I did get these fancy tattoos here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's just a little dot. I got one there, one there, and then one kind of like in the middle. They are tattoos, they are going to be there forever, but they are very, very small and really only I noticed. Radiation was honestly a breeze. They said that because it, they'll be radiating around my throat and things like that, that my throat might be sore. Um, I might get a rash or whatever, but I didn't get anything. I had a little bit of redness because, like, of where they radiated just on my chest, but some people have been sick from radiation, but um, not likely. It's more just, like, skin irritations. You might get a, a few, like, mouth sores, throat sores, things like that, but if you can do chemo, you can do radiation, trust me. It, radiation is more just the emotional thing to me. It's it's the fact that everybody has to be out of the room and, you know, wearing these suits and you're just kind of like there exposed, like waiting for the zapper to zap you while everyone else is like, take cover! <laughs> so that's it for me commenting on your comments that you've left on my videos. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will be making a part two. Keep commenting and I will keep answering. Bye!